All right, so you've decided today that one of the things you would like to do as you're walking trails is you would like to do the roots activity. You, you looked it over and it looks like something that, yeah, that'd be a fun thing for the kids to do. The weather's great. You know, let's go out and do this on the trail. There are two locations. Uh, as you can see, we kind of have to have a table with some metal plates on it to do this activity. So we have two locations for you to decide. You can either do it on the east side of Fish Hatchery Road at post 28, which is where we are right now. Or if you're walking trails on the other side, Big Buck Cutoff, Hidden Creek Trail Loop, if you're over on that side, at post 21, it has the same setup. Tables, a little root sign hanging off the side, and the metal plates on it. Either one of those places are fine because you have in your trail bag the rest of the activity pieces that you need. So you want to find this. It has your teacher instructions here. There is not a student set of instructions to go with this. So you have your teacher information here and then on the back side you have the, the discussion prompts in both English and Spanish um, that go with the conversation that you're going to have after you actually build the roots puzzles. So what we're here doing is working on putting together two pictures and they're in, in a portrait form, you know, just like you would print out something in portrait form or on the computer. So let's move this out of our way. And we're going to take from the roots bag a couple of things. We need the stack of picture cards, all right? So that's our stack of picture cards. And then after that, we'll need our little prompts that the students will look at. And again, theirs are also in English and Spanish. So do know that if you would like to do this as an activity in Spanish, you have the Spanish on one side and the English on the other side. You can have some kids do it in Spanish, some kids do it in English, whichever way you want to do it. So we're, we're just going to kind of lay those out there for students to look at after they put the puzzle together. So now what do they do first? This is going to be a quick recap of your teacher instructions, just showing you the actual activity itself. But do know there are some discussion points uh, that you're welcome to use ahead of that. So to get to what the activity actually is, let's look at what we have going on. We have a total of 24 pieces, which sounds like a nightmare, but it's not. Because when you look at the back, you have a blue set and you have an orange set. So let's work with the orange set over here, the blue set over here. They're magnetic so that if there's a slight breeze or the kids need to move pieces around, they'll stay put which is why we have the little magnets. Now, one key piece is you're going to pass out a picture card to each student. There are 24. It's possible that there may be a student that has two pieces. Better though, if you passed out the extra pieces to your parent chaperone, or you did a couple of the extra pieces, and here's why. On the back of the card is the color. So these are the blue pieces. These are gonna be the orange pieces. All right, but there also is a letter on the back of the card. This card has an F. This one has a V. They don't, they don't spell anything. It's not like we're gonna come up with some snappy little, you know, word or anything, but we just need to remember what the, the letters are. So F, when we're finished putting the puzzle together, we locate which tree is pictured, either the blue picture tree or the orange picture tree, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So once we've done that, then this person over here that has the F card matches up with this person over here that had the letter F card. They check out the prompt that goes with F, which is the tree roots look, and they're going to talk amongst, amongst themselves about that, or they can talk to the whole group about it, whatever you want to do. You're in charge of the time and how much time you spend here. What I was looking at when I built this activity is like 15 minutes. You've got more trail stuff to do. So just kind of knock out what you want to do in 15 minutes, but I do think they, there needs to be, these pieces definitely go with the activity itself. So they put their piece down, they find their other matching partner, and they start to talk about trees. So we turn the pieces over. And it's a, you know, it's a picture of trees. And in the interest of time, video time, we're, we've already put, I've already put the pieces together on what the, the picture should look like. But, you know, you work with the idea that, okay, well, there's a corner piece. Um, here's another corner piece. So they start building the puzzle. There are 12 pieces for each picture. 
Once they get the pictures finished, this group's doing the same thing over here. Once they get them pin finished, then they look around in this area to find, okay, is this picture of a tree in this area, or is it this picture that's a tree in this area? And note to self, whichever tree picture you're looking at, either here at post 28 or at post 21, both of these trees are kind of in a little pondish area, obviously, so you can see the roots. All right, so you're gonna look in kind of a low place or a little small dry pond area to try to find where that tree is. And they're, they're pretty different. Actually, you kind of look at the table and you think, well, they're kind of the same, but when you see them out in the woods, they are definitely different. So after then, the whole group kind of looks at, oh, it's that tree over there. You have your discussion about which tree prompt that each group is gonna be talking about. You know, they're little pairs of, of students. Then you're gonna be moving on to your next place on the trail. It's really kind of a cool thing to do. It slows the kids down, helps them actually look at roots and, and also visual clues on what something look like, looks like. You can do this activity whether the trees are green or the trees are brown, say in end of December, something like that. It works no matter what seasonal season of the year you're in. All right, an interesting note at post 28, um, which you may not have realized when you were here, is behind me in this tree, you'll see some signage about um, bees and beehives because there is a beehive way up in that tree. My suggestion to you is that you do not mention this to the kids if you're going to stop at this place until after you have already done the roots activity, if this is where you're going to stop, um, because as soon as you mention the word beehive, they're going to panic. Hundreds and hundreds of children have passed this spot, done the roots activity, and, and you're not going to be the one in a million person that's going to get stung. All right, so just realize that, that we do have a, a really, really interesting uh, bees in the forest possibility too, as well as doing the roots activity. All right, so there you go. And then to put everything back in the bag, you just bundle it all together. If you wanted to count, there's 12 of each color. If you just want to count totally, there's 24 pictures. Everything slides back in the bag goes back in your trail bag, you leave the table, and you're on your way.